Maximizing comfort in airline seats is subjective, depending on your needs and desires. This is a good thing. This means we're not all vying for the same seats on the plane. And let's get it right. Unless you're in business class, it's not actually comfortable, but some seats are better than others. This video is a guide to comfortable plane seating. I'll break down the pros and cons of different types of economy seats on the airplane, including which seats are best for certain types of flyers. By the end, you'll know how to find the most comfortable airline seat for your specific needs so you can travel smart in style. Let's do this. When it comes to choosing the best seat for a pleasant flight, it's important to first understand the pros and cons of different types of seats and the different parts of the airplane. So we'll start here and then I will break down the best airline seats for comfort depending on what type of flyer you are. Now, before you get all cheeky and say that flying in business class or first class is the only way to be comfortable, <laughs> I'll just say it for you. Flying in business class or first class is the only way to truly be comfortable. If that's something that you aspire towards, then check out my episode about frequent flyer miles to learn how most of my long haul flights are in business class for less than the price of economy. But I have done and still do my fair share of economy flights. And there is something of an art to choosing comfortable seats. So let's get into it. First up, let's look at window seats. Window seats give you a little more personal space and the ability to lean against the side of the airplane if you wanna get some sleep. You also won't be bothered by anybody else in your row who wants to get up and down during the course of the flight. Window seats are also typically colder, which is a double-edged sword depending on what kind of temperature you prefer. I always have an extra layer in my personal item bag to deal with this. The biggest con to window seats is that it's more difficult to get up and move around the plane to stretch your legs or go to the toilet. I tend to wait until at least one other person in my row has gotten up before I get up myself, but of course this isn't always possible. Aisle seats, by contrast, make it much easier to get up and move around the plane. They also arguably give you a little more room to stretch out your legs while you're seated. Though ideally you aren't that person who stretches your legs completely into the aisle and then falls asleep, I'm just saying. Aisle seats also give you better access to the overhead bins and it's easier to catch the attention of the flight attendants if you need any kind of assistance. The dark side of aisle seats is that you have to get up and move out of the way every time someone in your row wants to get up. The flight attendant is also going to be leaning over you to serve people in the window and middle seats and people walking by in the aisle will brush up against you and may bump your arm, which can be highly annoying if you're trying to sleep. And then of course there are middle seats, which let's get it right, nobody wants. There is an unspoken rule that the person in the middle seat has access to both armrests on either side of them. So if you are seated in a window or aisle seat, please give your poor middle seat companion this concession. There is not much else for them to enjoy on the flight. So give them this. Bulkhead seats are seats with a wall or bulkhead right in front. They're usually immediately behind the toilets or premium or business class sections, depending on the plane. Because there's no seat in front, the tray table will come out of the armrest. There tends to be a little more leg room in these seats as well. On the flip side, there is no underseat storage in front of you, so your personal item bag and any other bits and bobs will need to go into the overhead bin for takeoff and landing. And bulkhead seats have an additional perk that I will get to in a minute. Well, it's a perk for some people and a definite drawback for others. Also, because of the additional leg room and being towards the front of the economy section of the airplane, bulkhead seats do sometimes come with an additional premium. If you're gonna be stuck in the middle seat, it's best to be in the bulkhead row because it's a little bit easier to get up without disturbing your seatmates. Emergency road seats tend to come at a premium because similar to bulkhead seats, they come with additional leg room. Depending on the layout of the plane, you may or may not be able to stow your personal item underneath the seat in front of you. So similarly, you may need to keep it in the overhead bin for takeoff and landing. Emergency seats also come with the responsibility to assist flight attendants in the case of an emergency. They will ask you before the flight takes off if you are willing and able to be of assistance, and you will need to verbally acknowledge that you can help, and ultimately that you can speak enough of the language, usually English, to follow their instructions in the event of an emergency. Next step is the front versus back of the plane debate. While most people tend to book seats at the front of the plane, they do each have pros and cons. In my episode about long haul flight tips, I mentioned how seats at the back of the plane might be more appealing for people who need overhead bin space since people seated at the back of the plane tend to board first. I came under a lot of fire for this comment, which is my bad, I wasn't exactly clear. Obviously business class and first class passengers will board first, along with people who have elite airline status, people who need additional time to board and to get to their seats and sometimes families as well. After all that, and once the economy section starts boarding, planes are supposed to board from the back to the front. 
However, even this doesn't seem to happen anymore depending on the airline. And frankly, even if the airline does board this way, some people just don't follow the instructions and they board ahead of the boarding group listed on their boarding pass. So yeah, boarding can be a bit unpredictable these days. But I still maintain that if you need overhead bin space, sitting at the back of the plane will at least increase your chances of being able to stow your carry-on luggage overhead. Because while some people might try to stow their luggage in front of their seats so they can get it on their way off the plane, nobody is going to walk behind their seats to stow their luggage overhead unless there is zero space left. So I'm sticking to my story. If you have carry-on luggage and you don't want to worry about stowing it, you might want a seat near the back of the plane. Seats at the back of the plane are also less likely to be totally booked up. So if there's extra space on the plane, you might just find an empty seat next to you. Seats at the back of the plane also give you better access to the galley and the washrooms for better or worse. Some people like this convenience, while others don't like the inherent noise and the light from the galley, the lineups for the toilet and possible bathroom smells. I'm in camp number two on this one. The back of the plane is not my preference. As a final plus for seats at the back of the plane though, if you are in a plane crash, apparently you have a better chance of surviving. I would never choose a seat based on this bit of trivia, but do with this information what you will. So front of the plane, why is it so popular? Probably because sitting in front of the plane means you get to disembark quicker. This also means you'll be closer to the front of the lineup if you are flying to a new country and you need to clear customs and immigration. And you may get served your food and drinks faster since many food and beverage carts start at the front and move to the back. On a long flight or a big plane, this gives you a better chance of getting the meal of your choice and more time to rest or work after the meal is served and cleared. Now let's look at five flyer types or personal preferences and the seats you need to choose if you're one of these people. Then I'll finish off with some special tips and tricks for getting and making the most of the best seat without overpaying. Some people are all about reclining their seats. If this is you, then do not choose seats in front of an emergency row or the last seat on the plane or seats in front of bulkheads because these will all have limited recline if they recline at all. And if you do like to recline your seat, I do have a request on behalf of everybody who is ever going to sit behind you. Please recline your seat slowly and or look behind you first to make sure that the person sitting behind you doesn't have drinks or a laptop on the tray table. I have a friend whose laptop screen was completely shattered because the person in front reclined their seat so quickly that the laptop got crushed between the seat back and the tray table. I've had some close calls in this department myself, so much so that I don't even usually put my laptop on the tray table at all anymore, which is insane because it would be way better ergonomically if I could. And I also personally have had drinks splashed on my lap because of an overzealous recliner. So please just don't be that person, please. If you're a nervous flyer, I have a few suggestions. First of all, if turbulence makes you uneasy, then choosing seats in the middle of the plane will serve you best since these are the least bumpy in turbulence. You may also want to choose an aisle seat since it'll be easier to spot flight attendants and to observe that they're not at all concerned about the turbulence. If you're just generally nervous to fly, then you might want to choose an aisle seat closer to the galley so again that you can see the flight attendants and you can rest assured that it's business as usual. Also, let them know that you're nervous about flying. They may come and check on you to make sure that you're doing okay. This depends on the flight attendant and how busy the flight is, of course, but it can't hurt to let them know. If you're flying with a baby, first of all, my condolences. It is no easy task to juggle all of your stuff as well as the additional accessories that come with having a young child, plus trying to keep your child comfortable. And nobody likes a crying baby, least of all the parents. So I feel for you. If you book a bulkhead seat, some airplanes have bassinets that can attach to the wall so your baby can rest and you can go hands-free for a bit and eat a meal, catch some rest, generally be a little bit more comfortable. If this isn't possible and you're traveling with a lap baby, you might prefer a window seat since you can use the armrest by the window as support to nurse or just hold your child and you'll have a bit of extra room without your arm getting bumped. Speaking of sleep, if you plan to catch some shut-eye on your flight, then a window seat will be right up your alley. Not only does it give you the extra space and the ability to lean on the airplane wall, but also the cooler temperature is usually more conducive to sleeping. Also, you won't be disturbed by anybody in your row trying to get up. And remember the rules of reclining. If you want to recline your seat to sleep, avoid seats in front of the emergency rows and the bulkheads. And check behind you before you recline. If you have a tight connection, then sitting at the front of the plane will allow you to disembark first and run for your next flight if you're down to the wire. 
If you don't have a seat at or near the front, then let your flight attendant know about the tight connection. They may be able to move you up towards the front before landing so that you can get off first. I had this happen a few years ago. The flight attendants could see on the manifest that I had a connecting flight with the same airline. And they also knew something that I didn't know, which was that I had to change terminals at the connecting airport. Even worse yet, the first flight was delayed. So while I was sitting on the delayed flight, waiting for it to take off, the flight attendants approached me and confirmed that I had a tight connection. And they told me that it was gonna be down to the wire in terms of making it to my next flight. So as the plane was descending, they moved me up to the very front so that I could get off as soon as the door opened and bolt for my connecting flight. I made the connection, just. Even though it worked out that time, I did not enjoy the stress of wondering if I, along with my luggage, would make it to the connection. So now I build in longer layovers to ensure that I'm not in that situation. I covered this and other critical layover mistakes and advice in another episode, so check that out. Here are some final tips and tricks to make sure your next flight seat selection is as comfortable as possible. First, check the headrest. The sides of your headrest might bend in so that you can lean your head against it while you rest. Also, before I lock in my seat selection, I always check seatguru.com. It shows the exact layout of the plane that I'm flying on so I can make sure that the seat is good. They also alert you if the seats don't recline or if there's no window by the seat, etc. It's a super handy tool. Unfortunately, some of the seats that I mentioned in this episode require you to pay extra. Seats in the emergency row and bulkhead rows are often considered premium seats. But if you really need that extra leg room or additional comfort or amenities, maybe it's just worthwhile to lock it in and pay for it. Likewise, if you're on a red-eye flight and you have a full day on arrival at your destination and you know that you can only sleep in a window seat and you don't like turbulence, you may as well just book that window seat in the middle of the airplane to give yourself the best chances of arriving ready to hit the ground running. If you don't wanna pay for seat selection and you're willing to play it fast and loose, you might wanna wait until online check-in, at which point some airlines will allow you to choose your seats for free. If they automatically assign seats and you wanna change the seat you've been assigned, you might be able to do so at the check-in desk. It's at the sole discrepancy of the check-in attendant, but I will admit I have had some good luck with this strategy. In my super popular episode about surviving long haul flights, I share some additional advice about choosing the best seat if you don't have specific needs, and the result may surprise you. So check that out if you wanna learn more. It'll be on the next screen. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA The Professional Hobo, and I'll catch you next time.